welcome my dear learners for this course on operations research in this module 1 we were discussing on formulation and solving the linear programming problems by using graphical method let us solve few additional problems on solving the linear programming problem using graphical approach the problem number 9 of our discussion on graphical method states that solve the following lpp graphically z max is equal to 300x1 plus 400x2 subjected to 5x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 200 3x1 plus 5x2 less than or equal to 150 5x1 plus 4x2 greater than or equal to 100 8x1 plus 4x2 greater than or equal to 80 so we have both less than or equal to and greater than or equal to constraints come let us solve problem number 9 so as we already discussed first convert all these constraints to equations that is i'll take the first one if i take first one if I convert the constraint to equation, I will get it as 5x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 200. Now set one value to 0 and calculate the another value and find the coordinate of this line. That is, if x2 tends to 0, then the value of x1 will be 200 by 5. 5 fours are 20, it will be 40. So when x1 tends to 0, the value of x2 will be 50. So the coordinates of first constraints are 40 comma 50. Let me use calculator you know, to avoid mistakes. That is 200 200 by 5 is 40 200 by 4 is 50. Next, moving ahead for second one, we have the second constraint. So, make it as an equation and find the value of x1 and x2. We have 3x1 plus 5x2 is equal to 150. Now, setting x2, 10, x2 to 0, I will get the value of x1 as 150 by 3. That is 50. Now setting x1 to 0, I will get the value of x2 as 150 by 5, that is 30. So the coordinates of second constraint are 50, comma 30. Now move for third constraint. If I move for third constraint, we have, so make the third constraint as equation and find the value of x1 and x2 that is 5x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 100 so setting x2 to 0 I will get the value of x1 has 20 now setting x1 to 0 I will get the value of x2 as 100 by 4 100 by 4 that is 25 So the coordinates of constraint 3 are 20 comma 25. Similarly, take constraint 4 as equation that is 8x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 80. Now set x2 to 0 and find the value of x1. x1 will become 10. Now set x1 to 0 and find the value of x2, x2 will become 20. So therefore, the constraints, sorry, the coordinates of this equation will be 10 comma 20, will be 10 comma 20, right. So we obtained all the four constraints, coordinates of all these four, now plot the graph. That is, if I go and plot the graph, we will have x2 is always taken in y-axis. So, x2 is always plotted in y-axis. So, highest value of y we have as 50. So, I want 50 to be the highest value. So therefore, 
I will take 20 each. So I will get it as let me take it as 50. Then I will take it as 40. Then I will take it as 30. Then 20. Then 10. So then I will get the origin. So similarly I will get the x-axis. x-axis always represents the variable x1. So the maximum value of x1 is also 50. So therefore in the positive x-axis I want till 50. So mark it. It will be 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. Right? So now insert the lines. What we have that is correct. So this will be 60 and x axis always indicates the variable x1 y axis always indicates the variable x2 this you people already know now inserting the lines what we have constructed we have the line 1 coordinates as 40 comma 50 so we have 40 comma 50 as a line 1 so connect 40 comma 50 so this is our line 1 and we have the symbol less than or equal to so therefore this line will move downwards so this line will move downwards next we have 50 comma 30 so next we have 50 comma 30 so connect these two coordinates so this is our second constraint this is our second constraint it also has the sign less than or equal to so therefore this will also move downwards less than or equal to then we have 20 comma 25 20 comma 25 so 20 comma 25 connect these two 20 comma 25 connected and this line has the constraint as greater than or equal to so therefore this should move up so this will move up next we have 10 comma 20 so 10 comma 20 is here 10 comma 20 and we have greater than or equal to sign so therefore this line will also move upward first one is 40 comma 50 so this is the first constraint next we have 50 comma 30 so this is second constraint next we have third constraint and the fourth one clear now identify the common region for all these four constraints right so if i take this one this region so it does not belongs to constraint 2 so therefore this region is ruled out now if i take this region this does not belong to constraint 1 that is also ruled out now if i take this region so this belongs to all the four right and if i go for this one so this region will not belongs to constraint three so hence this is the region which belongs to all the four constraints so therefore i'll get the feasible region i'll get the feasible region as so this is the feasible region so i got the feasible region and this is the feasible region and this is the feasible region I found the feasible region. In the feasible region, you identify the corners. So we have corner A, then we have B, then we have C here. We have C here. So this is the boundary of the feasible region. Then we have D, and finally we have E. Right? Now one way is that find the coordinates of all these salient points A, B, C, D and E. So find the coordinates 
substitute in the objective function z max x1 and x2 and find which point will give us the maximum value that is the solution for the problem this method is already known to you now I'll use the slant line approach that is use the objective function so we have the objective function as z max is equal to 300x1 plus 400x2 so formulate it as 300x1 is equal to minus 400x2 minus 400x2 and find the value of x1 by x2 so x1 by x2 will be minus 4 by 3 x1 is minus 4 x2 is 3 now pl plot that on the graph that is x1 is minus 4 so x1 is minus 4 so plot it on the graph x1 is minus 4 that is we have minus 10 minus 20 and minus 30 we want minus 4 so minus 4 will be somewhere here minus 4 cross 3 so minus 4 cross 3 so this is 5 so somewhere here so we'll get the coordinate of minus 4 comma plus 3 here so this is minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 right so there you constrained a slant line connect that point to origin so connect this point minus 4 comma 3 so the coordinates of the objective function is minus 4 comma 3 so if I mark minus 4 comma 3 connect it to origin connect it to origin and extend both front and rear of this line passing through minus 4 comma 3 and origin clear now use this line and slide this line such a way that identify the farthest salient point for which this slope will touch so when i slant it so first i'll get it as a so then if i slide further i'll get b so then if i slide it further i'll get e then i'll get c and finally i will get d so d is the farthest corner for the slant line so d is the farthest one so therefore so i use this line and slant it i'll get a as first b as second e as third c as fourth and d as fifth so since d is the farthest to this slant line so d is the solution now one method is that at d find the coordinates what are the coordinates at d find the coordinates that will give you the value of x1 and x2 and if you measure it is tedious for us to identify exact value of x1 and x2 right so one method is that directly you can find the value of coordinates d from the graph so one way is that so d is the farthest corner d is the farthest point or corner point to the objective function line. objective function line hence it is the solution right now one way is that identify the coordinates of point d that is the value of x1 and x2 substitute you will get the value of x1 and x2 and also z max since it is very difficult for us to measure from graph at point d we have two lines right at point d we have two lines that is constraint 2 and constraint 1 so since since at d we have we have two equations two equations that is two equations intersecting two equations intersecting 
So solve these two equations. Solve these two equations. Solve these two equations. So one is equation 1, another one is equation 2. These two equations are intersecting at point D. So note on those two equations. Equation 1 is 5x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 200. And equation 2 is 3x1 plus 5x2 is equal to 150. Now solve these two equations using calculator. Why I am taking these two equations? Because these two equations are intersecting at point D. Hence, if you solve these two equations, you will get the value of x1 and x2, which are nothing but the coordinates of point D. Or you can also directly measure from the graph. If you measure from the graph, you won't get the exact answer. So to get the exact solution, solve these two equations. So how to solve these two equations, you know. So go for mode, select equation. There you select ax plus by is equal to c. ax plus by is equal to c, the first equation. So then you feed value of a is 5, value of b is 4, value of c is 200. Then we have value of a is 3, value of b is 5, then value of c is 150. So if I solve, I will get the values as, so solving which, so solving this, I will get the value of x1 as 400 by 13 and x2 as 150 by 13. So this is the answer for coordinates x1 and x2 which is nothing but coordinate of x1 is 400 by 13 which is 30.76 yes if I extend I will get approximately 31 correct then x2 is turning out to be 150 by 13 that is 11.54 so if I come horizontally yes I am getting 11 if I come horizontally so the solution is found to be correct so hence we got the x1 and x2 hence the value of z max is 300 x1 300 x1 that is 400 by 13 plus 400 x2 that is 150 by 13 so hence the value of z max will be 300 into 400 by 13 plus 400 into 150 by 13 which is equal to 180,000 by 13 180,000 by 13 which is nothing but 13,846 13,846.15 So if you use graph, you will get 31 and 11. Right? If I use 31 and 11, so you will get the solution as 300 into 31 plus 400 into 11 which is equal to 13,700. So if you exactly measure, you might get 11.5. If you get 11.5, the answer will be closer, 13,900. So from graph, you will get it as 31 cross 11.5. The answer is closer, 13,900. But the exact solution is 13,846.15. So this is how we can be exact solution for linear programming problem using graphical method also. So that's all from this lecture. Thank you all.